Welcome to the Creation Grounds Podcast, where we break down the success, habits, and the life of people in creative fields and discover how they've gotten to where they are, what they aspire to be, and how you can live your dreams too. Let's get to the show. Hi, Aaron. What's up, D? What's good, man? I like that shirt you got on. Thank you, sir. V-neck team, team V-neck since uh, 99, high school. 99 represent me? I love V-necks, bro. Okay. I used to get jokes in high school from it. Yeah, but now now it's a cool thing. Now it's a cool thing, yeah. And I'm a little bigger now, so I fill it out. Yeah, you, you know, out. Yeah. You used to do track and all that, right? I did, yeah, man. Uh, so I ran track all throughout high, uh, high school and in college, but I also swam for like ten years. Yeah, I swam since I was eight years old, eight to eighteen. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, man. Okay, it's very good, very good exercise. Where's home for you? Uh, Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Okay, so it's uh, right outside of Philadelphia, 40, 45 minutes like north northwest. Okay. So yeah, it's like the boonies. Out, out in the boonies? So boonies, kind of country sir. Boy. Straight old country. Okay. <laughs> and what was that like growing up in the country? It was cool, man. I mean, um, it's definitely, you needed a car to get around. You know, it's not like New York, you know, where everything's so intimate and close. Yeah. Um, And I'm an asthmatic, so my asthma was really bad uh, when I was younger. Um, but yeah, so those are definitely like some of the crazy memories like growing out there in there, like some of the bad things, you know, asthma and, you know, the hay weed. The what? The hay weed. What is that? You don't know hay weed? I don't. Is you talking about tumbleweed? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> I don't. I we, never we, know. Hay we might weed. as well have tumbleweed. It's like a weed that grows in it, and people that have allergies are like very susceptible to it. But it's like in the country. It's like hay weed. Oh, I guess yeah. you wouldn't know about that. I would exactly. Right? You know I mean? Exactly, bro. You can't smoke it, but it'll fuck you up. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cool. So you have a big family. Two siblings. Two. No. Four siblings. Four. Yeah. Two yeah. brothers and two sisters. Yes, yes, yes. And and you're, you're the youngest. I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah, I'm the oldest. Yeah, so a lot of responsibility. Yeah, man. So I have uh, two younger brothers, uh, and then two younger sisters, and the girls are twins. Wow. Uh, so yeah, and they're one of them is actually graduating from our uh, college this uh, next weekend, rather. Which college? Uh, Drexel. Drexel uh, University. Yeah, okay. and uh, Philly. So. I think I applied to Drexel. Did you? I think so. I didn't yeah. get enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you're no. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Well, she actually plays lacrosse. She's an athlete, too. So uh, she got a lacrosse scholarship. Wow. So, yeah, she's doing her thing, man. She's a midi? I'm sorry? Midi or defense? Uh, she does both. She, oh, wow. So she she's like the person, like, when they throw the ball up in the air, she's the one that, like, I forget what they call it. I don't. I forget. You try to like get it for their team. I can see what you're doing. But yeah, yeah, you see, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm basically making the motion of like getting a ball with a lacrosse stick, but you know, um, yeah. He looks like he's fishing. Yeah. <laughs> but she does it way better. Way better. So you, are they supportive? Of you? Oh yeah, yeah, for like, sure. Um, definitely, my brothers and sisters. I mean, they're super inquisitive about yeah. it. Um, and yeah, they they always want to know what's going on, and you know when the next project is coming out. Um, and my mother is super supportive. Yeah. Uh, she always, she's always been that one, you know, no matter what I wanted to do. She's always been, you know, always like the number one fan. Number one fan. Number one fan. And my stepfather as well. He's great. Yeah. He's amazing. And he's always right with my mom and, and my siblings. So yeah, it's definitely had that support. That's cool, man. Yeah, man. Cool. So you, you, uh, mentioned before that you were in sports. Yes. You did swimming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what, did your mom influence you going to sports? Is that something you just wanted to do? Well, it's, it was a combination of two things. I wanted to swim because, like, I didn't know how to when I was watching the Olympics. I'm, I'm a huge Black fan of the Olympics. Can't Black people can't swim, right? <laughs> like, that, that's a misconception. I mean, it's pretty much true, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, we usually can't. I was the only black person on, like, a 25-person swim team. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I used to always love the, the Olympics, and I fell in love with swimming. Mm -hmm. So when I was younger, you know, I was like, you know, I want to swim. And then I also had asthma, as, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah. um, that was, like, the perfect exercise uh, for that to, to help me to, like, um, expand my lungs and, and get better for my breathing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, basically, my mom took me uh, to the sign-up for swim team one day, and I went and signed up and did it for, like, 10 years, man. Wow. Loved it, man. Loved it. So it was a mixture of, like, Olympics and wanting to, like, overcome your, your it, asthma. Exactly, man. exactly. That's cool. Exactly. So a lot of triumph coming out of that. What yes. What habits did you, like, develop as a young athlete that helped you as an actor? Ooh. If any. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think I definitely, and this is probably corny, but like perseverance, you know, like mm -hmm. don't give up when it gets really tough. Yeah. I mean, because definitely in the pool, you're doing some events that are super trying on your body and it's very easy to stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's very easy to stop and stand up in the pool and, and get disqualified. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it took a lot of, um, 
discipline to to get to that point where it was like you know you got to push push harder mm -hmm. and I, I think that definitely um spills over into the acting because you know there's definitely times where you want to stop you know For especially sure. when you're not getting work yeah or you know you're getting shitty work yeah you know what i mean and uh yeah you, you know exactly what I, about. I it's like i do so it's like you know um it's that uh, i think one quality is something that i definitely learned just to persevere and stick with it um and just ride it out you know yeah um yeah cool yeah i think that's definitely the one big big thing that i learned from athletics that supposed to that acting for sure and did you always want to act i or? didn't no. no so i actually ever since i was a little kid i wanted to be a lawyer a lawyer. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I, I, I can see it. Yeah, I can crazy. See it, but yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Man. Yeah, but um, yeah, man, I always, always wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I even, you know, when I was in school, I would take classes that would like help me to better, be a better like linguist or, or just you know taking like law classes in high school or taking like AP classes when I was in high school just to make sure I was on the right trajectory. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, man, I mean, I went to school, I have two degrees, I have one in philosophy, and I have another one in political science, and that was pretty much my whole reason for moving to New York after I graduated college, was to go to law school here. Wow. Um, and then, and yeah, man, like, I came, I took the LSAT, um, I applied to law schools, um, I got into a few, and then, you know, it came time to, you know, decide, and I just got to a point where I was like, you know, I'm not really sure if, you know, I want to do this right now. Yeah. Cause I just got done undergrad. I, I didn't take any time off, and I was a philosophy major, so that was a lot of reading, a lot of writing, like a lot, a lot of time, like committed to to studying and stuff like that. And I wanted to take a little break. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna take a break. Uh, I'm gonna see how I feel about this in like a year or two, and then that year or two turned into like five, five years, six years. And yeah, so <laughs> so how'd you segue into acting? Was it uh, so like? I had done it in high school. I had done like some plays in high school. I did like Dracula and you know oh, I was twist. No, I was uh, grim. Okay. Yeah, okay. and it, it was really funny because um, you know I'm I'm black. I'm like dark skin. So <laughs> like at the end of the play, there's a part where grim where grim gets bitten, right? And you yeah. don't know until the incident to show the bite marks. <laughs> See, the makeup lady was like, I don't know what to do. Because she's like, on a white person, they just put, like, black yeah, makeup. Yeah. Like, on me, she's like, okay, I'm going to put, like, white, white, like, marks on your neck. So, like, at the end, someone walks over and shines a light on my neck to show that I'm bitten. And you can't see it. People were like, yo, why? That's hilarious. They're like, why is there a light shining on his neck? We can't see it. Oh, my God. You had to explain it to everybody. I didn't, afterwards, afterwards like, that I can't. I was moment. bit. And I had to show them the light. Like, look, there's bite marks. You see that makeup design? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> This bite marks. I got bit. I got bit. <laughs> but yeah, so like I did it in high school, and I never thought I could do anything practical. I didn't think it was something you would get a degree in to be practical. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and everything I had done up to that point of college was geared towards me going to law school. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that wasn't even really in my mind. Um, I think when I moved to the city, and I took that break, and I started working in a restaurant serving, mm -hmm. and you know the serving business. Yeah. Terrible. Thank God, I don't do it. Anymore. I know, man. Whew. I'm glad. I'm glad. But um. Yeah, I met a bunch of struggling artists, you know what I mean? And they were all serving, and I loved, I just love the struggle. I love the hustle, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you're going to work, you're working all day, and you're studying at the same time for a play, or you're auditioning in between, you know, your break and stuff like that. But, like, I love the life that, like, you never know what's going to happen, you know what I mean? You're living, it's sort of like spontaneity, you know? Yeah. You just, you don't know what's expected, you don't know what's going to come, but regardless, you're still always grinding. Because yeah. you're 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 hoping for something better. That goes then, in with that athlete like charge, like I want I want that yeah. accomplishment, achievement. Exactly. All that. Yep. Yeah, man. One hundred percent. Yeah. And I mean you've been doing pretty well because you've been featured on Black Box. Right? That was like two years ago, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, and that was actually like the last time I've been on network TV. Really? I mean it's still But that's how it happens that. though, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when it rains it pours and yep. then when it, there's a drought, it's Peace very dry. It's like I'm a I'm a I'm a blow. <laughs> <Yeah. now." laughs> that, you know, and, that, and that's how it was. Yeah. I felt I was like, you know, I finally had like this opportunity. I mean, because I, I I've been acting since twenty ten and that was two thousand fourteen. You know, it took me four years to get to that point. Yeah. And so I was just like all right, I wasn't like I made it, but I'm like, okay, cool. It should be easier for me to get jobs now. Right, right. Um, and that was like a great experience. I mean, when I first was casting it, I was only supposed to do a one line co star. Right. Um, and then yeah, I man, they started calling me back. They called me back for three additional episodes, and each episode that I did, I got more and more um, 
screen time, more and more lines. Um, and unfortunately, the show got canceled. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a bunch of reasons that factor into that, but it was it aired during the summer. Right. On ABC, and, you know, ratings are always low in the summer. No one's no one's fucking watching TV. Right. Everybody's right. out at the beach and shit like that. You know. So. Yeah. And were, yeah, so it just it, it got canceled, but uh, but yeah, man, I thought I was like I was like good. I'm gonna start auditioning like every day now. Like people oh, are gonna be knocking. Yeah, out yeah, yeah. Like they're gonna be asking me. Yeah, yeah. To be on this show, you know what I mean? I was very naive uh, at the idea, but um, yeah, man. But Black Box was a really really good experience. I met some cool people and got to work with some very very talented actors and actresses. So, okay. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who hasn't reached that point yet of like? not booking their first well you said perseverance right right like, are there any like were you just auditioning like how many times a week did you get mm. sent out were you who, who cast it who cast uh, it? so that was cast by tucker mason tucker mason uh, okay, uh yeah it was office. julie tucker and uh clara d'angelo who was the casting associate at the time okay uh, who cast who cast it but um yeah man i would say if you're still working towards that first network gig i'd say you shouldn't specifically be working towards that i say like you should be working for something bigger. Like, I think one thing I've learned is to like set a goal for like maybe a year or two. Yeah. And when you're setting that larger goal, the the, the like sort of like smaller things will come in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like you aim for that big big goal, mm -hmm. and along the way you're gonna hit those those milestones. You know what I mean? You're gonna you're gonna get something eventually. You're gonna get like you know maybe like one of those reenactment shows. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a play. Meanwhile. You know, as long as you're constantly like staying creatively viable, you know what I mean? Like doing something to to keep um, your mind and that muscle working. Right. It, it'll eventually happen, you know. It, it takes time for some people, you know. It just depends on the role. And it's luck of the dice. Luck of the dice, man. Luck of the dice. So you said that you, you definitely learned a lot. You were naive at one point. Yeah. So you learned a lot. What for sure. Would you, what things have you learned about the industry that you wish you had known when you started? Um... I definitely learned that it's not as easy to get representation as I would have initially thought. Mm -hmm. um, that's definitely one thing that <laughs> that's definitely still an issue. Um, but that um, and also you have to be business savvy, right? You know what I mean? Because most of it is talent, but then there's also a huge part of it that's about being business savvy. And sure, when I say yeah. business savvy, I mean like marketing yourself, yeah. having a website. You know, having that social media following. You know, now it's there's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instagram. and casting. Some casting officers are asking for people to be sent in that have large social following. media followings, right? Yeah. So now it's like it's not even about you being talented. It's about how many people you have on your Instagram or Facebook feed that they can advertise to for free, pretty much. Because it's right. gonna be like free advertisement. You know, if you're in a show or something. And you're advertising about it on your Instagram mm -hmm. or your Facebook or your Twitter. Not you know, that's watch. yeah, that's one less thing they have to do or pay for. True. Yeah, so it's just yeah, definitely, definitely that. Um and what else have I learned? I mean, I think I've definitely learned that, you know, things come in time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really set a date for when you want to do something. Like you can't really say, like, okay, if I'm not here in two years, mm -hmm. I should choose another career. Right. Like, if you're in, in acting, you, you should definitely be passionate about it. You should be doing it because you love it. Right. You know what I mean? And there should be no set date for when you're going to move on or it should just happen organically, you know? True. Just, you know, just live. Just live, you know, man. Just live, man. Except from the man himself. <laughs> there you go. Philosophy major, just live. Just live. <laughs> just live. <laughs> so if, if casting directors or producers um, were listening to this, mm -hmm. what kind of show... Or character would you want them to cast you as? Because you said business, a huge part of business is knowing your, and I'm doing air quotes here, yeah, your type, you're right. your, your your brand. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What would you what would you want to brand yourself at at this point? What kind of shows do you want to book? Uh so I love playing like professional types. You know, yeah. I didn't. I mentioned like law school earlier. I love playing attorneys, and I played them before. I I love playing like doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, I, lo I love playing like professional professional characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I tend to get sent out, unfortunately, and this is the business and how it works. Like, we go out for like the thug or yeah, the drug yeah. dealer, mm -hmm. and it's like it's like, come on, all right, you know, like all thugs and all drug dealers aren't black, right? You know what I mean? And, and one of the critiques I always get in the room is like, I need you to be tougher. Like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, like I can't help it. Like, this face is it tough, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a tough face. Like, even when I try to look tough, I just don't. It let me see. Work. Let me see your tough look, though. Just they like, can't see it, but I want to see. Just be like. 
Just like that. I'm I don't know. Got a smile I'm, I'm laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell we both get sent out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not dumb enough. They're like, come on. They're like, I've, even, I've even had one casting director like, yo, can you act? Can you add blacker? And wow. I'm like, are you for real? Wow. And I'm like, and that's just like the negative stereotype that's perpetuated in the industry. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like you have to be black to be a thug. You have to be black to be a drug dealer. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just one of those things where it's like you can do it. You can do it if you're good at it. You know, if it works for you, it works. Yeah. But, you know, that's just something that, that doesn't work for me. And it's never it never has. Yeah. You know? I, I definitely prefer to be like a professional type or some someone that has like complexity, you know? Yeah, yeah I um, agree. You know what I mean? Like not sure. just like one level, like for sure. one idea. So yeah, man, I mean, that's how, and I love comedy. So yeah. I mean, I love doing comedy. I write comedy. Um, I've done like stand up a couple times. You know, a long time ago, yeah. I didn't know and I don't think I'd that. do it ever again. No, <laughs> no, I would. It's, I would. It, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, it's hard. Um, I would do it again. Um, but I have to be like, you have to be in a certain mindset to do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did it at um Pitts People's Improv Theater, uh -huh. and uh, I did it randomly at God Gotham one time. Okay. It was one up. It was like an open mic, and um, I got a few laughs. You know, it wasn't. I didn't have like anything written per se. I was just going like off the top of my head or whatever, but. Um, it's fun. It's definitely difficult. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I like performing. Like, I, if I had the choice, I'd rather perform in front of a room of a bunch of people that I don't know rather than people that I know. I, I, you know? I kind of I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's just like people that know you, they know you too well. So right. like, they'll know that like you're acting or they'll know that like if you're faking the funk or something. Like, you know what I right, mean? Right, right, right. People that don't know you are like, okay, they're like, okay, this is a genuine like performance right. from someone that we don't know. Yeah. But people that you know are always like critiquing you the hardest because they're like, why did you? Why I know that you don't right. do that. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're not a thug. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Right. And it's like, yo, it's yeah, we're at, we're acting. It's putting on a show. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. of course you want to work. Yeah, yeah. So what actor do you most want to work with? Man, there's a few, but one guy that like I really, really like, and I think he's super underrated is uh, Jeffrey Wright. I yes, love, love, yeah. love Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. Um. He's just a phenomenal actor and just it, just a really nice guy. Like I follow him on Twitter and stuff like that. <coughs> Bless you. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like really, really good with like philanthropy and um, just giving back, man. Like he's a really, really good guy. <coughs> and uh, bless you. Thanks. It's allergy season, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So I mean, and I actually had the opportunity to meet him um, a long time ago. I, was, I worked at B Smith. I worked at B Smith's restaurant for like eight years. Yeah. And um, that's the first job I had when I moved to the city, and they just closed down uh, last year, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, because B. Smith is sick. She's suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh, so, wow. So, yeah, they had to close down the restaurant so that uh, so that they could take care of her. Um, but, yeah, so maybe like two or three years ago, it was during the Democratic Democratic National Convention, or there was a fundraiser in, in, in the city. I forget which one it was. Uh, but anyway, Obama was here, uh -huh. and Jeffrey Wright was a huge supporter of him. And uh, it still is, you know, I should say it was like he's not running anymore, yeah. but he is a supporter of him. And uh, he came into the restaurant with his, like, PR, I guess, and they were having lunch. And I never get starstruck. I mean, I used to see celebrities all the time at Beastman's restaurant. Like, I used to see Sierra. I, I met Shaq there. I met, like, um, Derek Jeter. Um, I'm name dropping now. I'm just giving you, like, no, man, context right. for, it, yeah, for yeah. like, how this affected me. But, um, and then, and then I saw just, like, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, cool. They're here. But, like, I saw Jeffrey Wright and, like, my panties really got in a bunch. Really? I was just like, yo, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, and I was working, it was, B. Smith was like a two-level restaurant, so I was working upstairs at the time, and one of my good friends knew that I liked Jeffrey Wright, and when he came to the restaurant, he came up to me, and he's like, don't tell you, never gets he's downstairs, and I'm like, who, man? And he's like, Jeffrey. I'm like, yeah. Jeffrey Wright? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> so, <laughs> so like I go to the top of, top of the stairs and like where he's sitting, you can see it from the top of the stairs. Um, so I'm looking down I'm like, oh my God. So I go down and I'm like lurking. I must look super creepy. <laughs> I'm looking around like I keep going downstairs and I go to the server area just like looking at him. And you know, he's not paying any attention. So finally, uh, one of our regulars is uh, in a restaurant. She's sitting at the bar and she's like, you know, just go up and just go up and introduce yourself to him, you know, because this will be something you, you'll regret if you if you never take this opportunity because you'll never know if you'll see him again. For sure. So I was like, okay, man. So I like sat around for a little bit and he was getting up to leave finally. So I ran I ran after him. It looked, it looked super suspect. That's I ran funny. after him, super suspect. I ran after him and I, you know, ran out. He went out the door. I tapped him on the shoulder. And I'm like, hey, hey, Mr. Wright, um, I'm sorry. I didn't want to like um, interrupt your lunch. 
but I just want to tell you I'm a huge fan of yours and I appreciate all the work you've done. And he was like, well, I appreciate that. He's like, what's your name? He put his head out. I was like, Dartel. Like <laughs> <that. laughs> Dartel. And I shook his head and he was like, it's nice to meet you, Dartel. And, I, and that was it. And he walked away. But that was, that was like super cool for me to like to meet him and you know for him to to ask my name and stuff like that. So I was definitely starstruck. But I would love to work with Jeffrey Wright. That's cool for sure. That's he's he's the man. Is he also the one that inspires you the most? Would you say? Uh yeah. I mean, I, I I'm inspired by a bunch of actors. I mean, right now, um, you know, definitely Jeffrey Wright. But um, Cindy Poitier. I've been watching a lot of his his work and uh, just trying to get some inspiration from that. But I mean, yeah. in the heat of the night. Um, That's a dope movie. Dope, dope movie. The smack that was heard around the world. Yo, the smack that was heard around yeah. the world, bro. Like it's it's crazy. But um, like I I'm watching. I find myself watching the scene over and over again. It's where, um, he's in the office where he when he gets arrested, and um, he's being questioned about why he's where, why he is where he is. Yeah. And um, he ends up telling uh, I forget the officer's name. Uh, it's Virgil and. Um, I forget too. What is his name? Well, anyway, the white cop that's arresting him. Yeah, and he, yeah. He basically ends up telling him that, you know, he, Virgil, uh, Sidney Poitier's character, he ends up telling him that he's a cop. Mm -hmm. And this is like in the 60s, like during, you know, all the race issues and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the cop's like, you're not, you're not a cop. You know, like, how much do they pay you, boy, to mm -hmm. do your cop work, you know, up in Philadelphia? And Virgil's like, I make $162.39. <laughs> so, and he's like, oh, boy, you make $162. And, and like, I love I love that scene, man. It's like, it's hilarious. But it's just like sitting put in and this guy just going at it. And um, it's it's like, yeah, it's a cool scene that I, I love to like watch over and over again. Yeah. But definitely Sidney Poitier and um, uh, who else? I mean, everyone loves Marlon Brando. For sure. Um, I definitely love... Um, this is weird, but uh, Eva Green. Eva Green. Yeah, she's like an English actress. She's on one of my favorite shows right now. It's called Penny Dreadful. I haven't seen that, y'all. It's mad, mad good, y'all. Really? It's like it's a, it's like a master class in acting, man. People it's, watch that show. It's, watch it, guys. It's great. Penny Dreadful. It's like with Josh Hartnett and Eva Green. Yeah. Um, and then there's a bunch of other talented like English actors, but like she is sick on that show. Yeah. Yeah, man. I just find myself watching, it and I'm just like, wow, man, like. I have a lot of work to do. We we all do. I don't think yeah. it ever stops. So, yeah, yeah, but, for know, sure. It's, it is a master class. Definitely. Definitely. Um, what what piece of advice? What's the best piece of advice? It could be in your legal background. It could be from family uh -huh. or an actor. What piece of advice would you say is the best piece of advice that you've been given? Oh, uh, man. I think one of the most interesting pieces of advice that I've been given is like always be kind, mm -hmm. you know, like, I think we tend to get caught up in our issues and whatever problems we're having. And it sometimes makes us like, you know, dull to like people and just interaction. And yeah. sometimes we, we kind of like, we're not our normal selves because we're just like engulfed in like whatever turmoil we're going through. Yeah. So and it gets hard to be kind or, or to be nice to people. Um, I think it's always, always, always something I'm striving for is just to be just to be kind, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you never know what someone else is going through. That's um, true. And people are definitely going through things, you know what I mean? For sure. Definitely in this day and age. So, I mean, that's always that's a, a really cool piece of advice that I've gotten, is like, just to be kind. And I think that crosses over into all, all, all careers, all aspects of life, whatever you're doing, you know, if you try to be kind, hopefully that'll manifest itself um, in, a, in a good way towards you, you know? Yeah. So, that's, yeah, be kind. For sure. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> how do you maintain you, you said that people are going through struggles they're going right. through things how do you maintain your upbeat attitude for people that might be going through struggles how uh -huh. do you pull through are there anything do you like meditate what do you like, I, I do, do you, meditate yeah. I mean I've always I've always 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 had like a positive disposition I mean I have people tell me that all the time and my family is the same way like yeah. if you meet any of my relatives we're all the same Yeah. like we're always just upbeat we're like really positive and I think you know we've definitely been through a lot as a family um, and I think one of the things we've learned is that like no matter what you're going through someone always has it worse you know sure. what i mean so i think that kind of gives you perspective it's kind of like you know all right man you're upset you're you're going to be late on rent this month or you know you just broke up with your girlfriend or you know um 
whatever I, I I didn't get what I ordered at the restaurant. You know, it's like no. someone's not eating. Right. So that you know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah. or someone is dead and they can't have a girlfriend. You know what I mean, or right. you know what I mean, like it's like it's like someone always has it worse. So I mean, you are in a pretty good situation right now. You know what I mean yeah. to be even be able to have these problems that you're having. For sure. So I mean, it's like you should be you should be grateful. You know, so that's pretty much it. And I and I practice Buddhism as well. Do you? I do. Yeah. So I've been practicing for a year now, but I've always been interested in Buddhism. I mean, when I was in college. Um, we learned about it, you know, a philosophy major. So we yeah. learned about Buddhism. It was always something that uh, that intrigued me. Yeah. Um, but I've never been like a religious person. My family's not, you know. Um, I'd say if anything, we're agnostic. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, man. I mean, I one of my friends practices, and he's an actor as well, and we studied with the same teacher. Yeah. And um, maybe like a year ago, I was seeing how he was um, bringing a bunch of people into the practice. And so I, I contacted him and I was just like, man, like I would love to come to a meeting and just see what this is about. Um, so I went and um, I went at like nine o'clock in the morning and I was pretty much there until like seven at night. Wow. And I, it was just like a really, wow. really good experience. And um, just chanting, you know, you know, just chanting with everyone. Like yeah. when everyone's doing it, it sounds like, I love it. It just sounds like music. You know what I mean? When yeah. everyone's chanting, like, cause everyone chants like a, diff a different frequency, a different level, a different volume. It just sounds like music when you're like chanting with a bunch of people. Wow. Uh, so yeah, man. So I mean, like that day I got my Gohanzin. Gohanzin is like the thing you chant to. Yeah. Um, the score you chant to. And uh, yeah, man. So I've been I've been practicing for a year, and it's it's very meditative. Mm -hmm. Um, and it definitely helps you to put your mind in the right place and where you need to be. It's also like the idea of Buddhism is like the cause and effect relationship, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's very helpful with the acting and just living life in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. Yeah, man. I mean, I chant. I, I chant for like, for my family, for my friends. You know, I chant to do well in you know in my career. You know, or with my writing and, and things like that. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely something that helps me to keep you know my upbeat attitude. attitude I guess right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very verbose with that. Yeah, I guess well, maybe I could have condensed some, it's, that. It's very eloquent. That, yeah, thank sure. you, thank you, sir. I it appreciate it. Thank, I learned. Thank you. I didn't. I don't know any of that. Thank so. you, thank you. Right, <laughs> I appreciate it. All right, well, maybe it wasn't yeah. too. Yeah, man. All right, all right. So you mentioned writing. Yes, yes. You just finished uh, your web series, Mayo and Chocolate. Yes, Mayo episode? and Chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, we just released the first episode yesterday. Yeah. Um, so Mayo and Chocolate. Um, I collaborate with two other guys. Um, so Sean Grande and Ben Dawson. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked with Sean Grande like in the past. He was one of the first people I worked with like five or six years ago on a web series. And we just stayed in contact over the years. And we've been writing things uh, throughout the years together. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, releasing them and stuff like that. Uh, but this was uh, mainly his, his idea. He created this. And then uh, we just got on board and, like, started writing episodes together. Uh, so Mayo and Chocolate is about um, a traffic cop uh -huh. who goes undercover as a rapper to solve uh, the police um, police unit's worst case. Wow. So it's a comedy. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I actually end up rapping in this. You got some bars? No, you got some... I have no bars. No bars? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's so crazy because, like, um, I had to record something uh, the other day for it, uh, just, like, a rap that we're putting into an episode, uh -huh. and it was, like, it was, like, the worst. Like, it was, like, it's funny. It's supposed to be a comedy, so it works. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? But, like, it was it was a struggle. But I just don't have a rapper's voice. You know? Like, when I try to rap, <laughs> it just sounds like... It sounds like I'm talking, like, right now. Yeah, can you sound more black when you rap? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, can you sound black, bro? Like, can you sell this? Like, you're yeah, a yeah. rapper, son. Like, but, uh, but, yeah, no, it's it's really funny. And uh, we're hoping that it, it does well. So, it's, like, it's going to be six episodes. Yeah. Um. So, we're actually still filming a bunch of them. But we have, like, the first couple episodes done. So, yeah, man, Mayo and Chocolate. We have a Facebook page. Yeah. Um, we're also on Twitter. And what's the Facebook and the Twitter for, for people? Uh, so it's just Facebook. If you just type in Mayo and Chocolate, I guess whatever what you do on Facebook, the it's slash. like the slash, the forward slash, yeah. and then Mayo and Chocolate. Okay. And then on Twitter, it's just um, at Mayo and Chocolate. At Mayo and Chocolate. Yep. M-A-Y-O. Oh, yep. N a or N? Uh, no. And the Amberstand. Okay. Amberstand and then Chocolate. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. Yep, yep. Um, how has creating your own work benefited your career? Why is it a good idea for any kind of artist? Uh, I think it's always a good idea to create your own work, especially like when you're hitting ruts where you're not getting work. Mm -hmm. um, it, it keeps you creatively viable, you know, and, and also we each, we each have our own voice, you know what I mean? Like for that's sure. partly our imagination, you know, kicking in the gear, which is something that's very, very important to an actor, like to have like a vivid and like bolstering imagination. 
I mean, that just helps you with character work. Mm -hmm. It just helps you, like, interpreting work, you know, and breaking down text and things like that and just creating scenes in your mind that help you to just really live in the moment. Yeah. Um, but, it's yeah, it's really good to create work. I mean, it's therapeutic as well. Yeah. I mean, I love, I love, love, love writing, um, especially, you know, when I have the opportunity to share it with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, I just finished um, writing my feature, for my first screenplay. Wow. Um, it took like about three years to do it. Uh, but now I'm in the process. I'm actually shooting an Indiegogo after I leave here. Yeah. A little later in the day. And then, um, and yeah, so I'm trying to raise money for that and stuff. But um, yeah, man, it's just like, it's very therapeutic, man. It's like, it's a really cool process. And I mean, everyone has their own process, their right. own process for writing and things like that. So I really enjoy it and really enjoy my, my, my process that I have. And I love writing the way I write. And um, I just hope that it relates, you know, people can relate to it on some level. For sure. Which is, yeah, yeah, so. How yeah. did you go about, like, developing that imagination? Or what would you say to people if they're like, oh, man, I want to write, but I don't think I have the imagination? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, how do you develop that? I mean, er I mean, ever since I was a kid, I've always had, like, a crazy imagination. Like, I remember me and my brother, I used to get my brother into it, but I used to always uh, say I was this superhero. Yeah. I, a squirrel boy. Was it? He's squirrel boy. Squirrel boy. Yeah, like, yeah. I supposed to Doug Squirrel Man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But yeah, so it was like I was a squirrel boy. So like, I'd go. I we had I had like this red blanket. I tied it around, you know, like a cape, and uh, I would put something on my ears to like look like a squirrel, and uh -huh. I hop around, hop around the house. This is when I was younger, not yeah. like anytime recent. I think you still do it. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe, maybe. But uh, yeah, and then I I pull my younger brother into it, and uh, he he was like always heavier than me. He was like bigger, yeah, and taller and just wider. So he was owl boy. Uh, what's it called? Owl, owl boy. Owl boy. Yeah, he was like an owl because he was like wider, you know, like. Oh, owl. Okay. Owl. Yeah, okay, like, cool, like cool. Ooh, ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, man. But I mean, I've always had like a crazy imagination, and um, I think as I've gotten older, it's just gotten like a little bit more nuts. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, just a little bit more mature in a sense. Okay. But I mean, I think it's something important to listen to because it's like it's your voice. You know what I mean? It's what makes you you. It's what makes you individual and unique. Yeah. So if you put that and you transfer that into writing, you know, you have something interesting that other people may not have thought about to write right or would even you know even even think about at all in general yeah, yeah you know what i mean um so i think it's very important to like listen to your imagination and listen to that unique voice that you have um because it's there for a reason yeah you know it's what makes you you so and you're kind of doing that now with an open mic series yes that you have yes like you're kind of trying to have artists veterans and like new new people come and do an open mic every what month or yeah like so we're, we're going to start the idea we, we're actually just going to do it one time yeah. thanks for coming out by the way yeah yeah, no doubt, yeah it was fun man it was a good turnout uh and we did it on like a sunday on mother's day yeah, yeah and we didn't think we'd have as big of a turnout as we did but a lot of people came out to support and a lot of people performed actually yeah but um I had the idea, um, and the venue that we had it at, I used to work at Meridian Twenty Three, mm -hmm. and um, they've been on me to like throw an event, and so finally they're actually they actually closed now, but around that time they were closing, and they were like, "Dartel, you know, come on, like, can you throw something, like, just have one party before we before we close?" So I was like, "Yeah, man, let's you know, let's do an open mic," and the idea was just to have a bunch of artists that can be creatively expressive, you know, in a supportive and encouraging environment while being creatively viable. Right. And like that's the atmosphere that we want to set. So, and we also wanted to bring all types of artists out. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted like stand up comedians, we wanted rappers, we wanted singers. Um, we had spoken word artists there. Um, we had, yeah, I mean, we would take it like dancers or if anyone wants to do a monologue or anything like that. Yeah. You know, what you're going to do next time? Yeah, I'll do it next okay, time. Okay, good, 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 good. But uh, yeah, man, so I mean, it's just a place, you know, we kind of wanted to be a haven. It was myself and my buddy uh, Jeremy Burnett, yeah. who's like, killing it right now in the acting scene like jerry burnett is is the man he's like, on it yeah you might want to have him in here huh? yeah he's a co-host guy yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. co-host exactly he'll yeah. try to tell oh, you that it was his event yeah, I remember you guys yeah yeah he'll try to tell you it was his <laughs> event but no 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 i have the brains behind the operation yeah, okay? okay no kidding but jerry's a good guy that's my my good friend but uh yeah so um yeah so the idea was we were just going to do it that one time but we had such a good turnout that we yeah. like we might as well start doing it again okay. so we're definitely like looking for a venue now and you know, I have ideas, you know, what, what I wanted to be for the next one. and uh, But it was crazy, man. We had, like, 23 people that hit us up to perform prior. Yeah. And then, man, like, maybe two, one or two people didn't show up. And then, like, eight more people wanted to perform when, wow. once they got there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it turned out great, man. I mean, 
And luckily, we had the venue for a lot longer than we were initially supposed to. It was yeah. a party that was supposed to happen after, and it canceled. So, I mean, we ended up being there all night. I mean, yeah, were you... Were I was you, there. I was yeah, there. it was like, like yeah. yeah, it was like all night, man. We started at... I mean, we opened doors at 4. We started the open mic at 6.30. And, man, it went till like, it midnight. Like 12. People yeah. were going after. Was yeah, done. yeah. And so. people, I mean, and if we could have, we probably could have stayed later. I think people would have kept going. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was a really, really good turnout. Cool, man. So, yeah. I mean, you mentioned that you're doing a Kickstarter. Yes. Um, what's the Kickstarter? for Mayo and Chocolate or your feature? Ah, uh, so it's for my feature. It's for your feature. It's for my feature. So, my feature is called Intermission. Intermission. Uh, Intermission, yeah. And, um... I basically started writing it three years ago. After class one day, I went out with a bunch of friends and we had drinks, as we normally do. And we were just conversing about, like, life. I mean, we always get to that point, like, we, after class, you know, essentially we're not working and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. philosophizing. <laughs> you know, we get caught up in what's happening with us. So we sit down and, you know, just converse about it. But we're talking about, like, you know, about life and, and how we aren't where we expected ourselves to be. Yeah. And, you know maybe we took like the wrong path along our journey yeah or you know when are we going to be able to make it to where it is we're supposed to be yeah or you know or like destiny like are we supposed to be where we are right now very very philosophical shit you know what i mean we had a few glasses of wine so it got a little long but uh anyway like after we spoke i mean i was just like very inspired by the conversation so i, I pretty much like went home um got on my laptop and i plugged away on my laptop for like six hours straight I was up to, yeah six straight six hours and i was up until like four or five a.m. and I typed like forty pages in that one night of the script. Wow! Uh, and that was like three years ago. <laughs> so like it took me another three years to write the rest because like I couldn't get in that headspace again. I mean it was like one of those things where I just felt like super compelled to write, and I yeah. just went and just and just did it. And um, and yeah, I mean it took me another three years to like continue continue adding on to it and writing and um. Yeah, I finally finished it in March wow. of this year. So, yeah, man, so, like, I'm trying to get the ball rolling. So I have some actors attached to it right now. And, um, you know, I have the locations. I'm actually going to be shooting in my hometown of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, and they're being super generous with helping me with shooting and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, so it's loosely based off of my life. Okay. Um, so it's basically the lead character's name is Chris. And you follow him, he's leading a very tumultuous life, and he has a series of very negative events that happen to him, mm -hmm. and he realizes that he needs to take a break from his life to go home and be family and friends, to figure out, like, what it is that he's missing. Right, right. Um, and so, yeah, so while he's there, you see a lot of his family aspect, uh, which is, like, a big part, of, part, big part of my life, and you meet a couple of his friends, and, you know, you meet a love interest that he had when he was... Uh, younger mm -hmm. um, but yeah so that's the intermission like is the break that he needs to take from his like his living to see and figure out what it is that he's missing okay and the point is that like you know at some point we all need to have a break or an intermission you know for sure. from what we're going through especially um, student loans I, yo, I need a break from those exactly <laughs> and I addressed that in there too there's a huge Sally Mae part that's I might scary. have to rewrite the Sally Mae name because they might try to sue me yeah, yeah. Or, they, or they'll be like Darto is still alive because he wrote about yeah, it yeah yeah he's not paying so home. yeah exactly they're like is he getting money from this we should like garnish his wages for this like, yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't want that but uh but yeah man so I address all of that too like you know student loans like being fired from a job yeah. meeting his girlfriend um even like small things like there's a part where he's on the train and he's already like in his mind and the little kid spills um, something on him. Oh man. And you know, it, it's just like a bunch of like a series of negative things happen to him. Wow. And, but in the end, he still f decides, you know, he figures out what it is that he's missing. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so it's it's interesting, I, I think, I hope. Yeah, it, it looks, uh, that post look good that you sent out. Oh yeah, thanks man, thanks man. How thanks, much man. are you trying to raise? Uh, right. So I'm trying to raise a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. So okay. I, I want to shoot it in twelve days. Got it. Um, and I'm trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars. So got it. And I'm doing Kickstarter because Kickstarter is like the all or nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. Kickstarter is like you either raise all the money or you don't get anything, and I and I feel like um that this project has a lot to offer, and a lot of people will be able to relate to it on some aspect. Right. You know what I mean, either you're going through the things that Chris is going through right now, uh -huh. with you know, like I said earlier, like not knowing where you're supposed to be, not feeling like you took the right path in your life, uh -huh. you know, just feeling like, you know, you're not enough. And yeah. either you're feeling that now or you, you're you older now and you can relate to feeling that when you were younger, you know what For I mean? Sure. Like someone's always going to really be able to relate to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, that's what, and that's what I want at the end. I want the work to be relatable. And, um, it's from my perspective, but 
in the end, the universal messages are something that everyone should be able to relate to. The most private things are usually the most universal. Yeah, so true, simple, true. You know, so I, I agree. Very true. Yes. And um, uh, is the Kickstarter? Do you guys have like a website that people could donate? Yeah. So or? um, I, I'm shooting the Kickstarter today, actually. Right. So um. But it it will be up on Kickstarter. It'll be through the site. Yeah. So I'm sure it'll just be like on Kickstarter.com slash like intermission or something like that. Okay. However, they uh, post the videos. And then I also have a link to it on my website. Okay. Uh, which is uh, dartellrmcrae.com. Okay. And spell that for uh, sure. Is, yep. So it's D-A-R-T-E-L-R-M-C-R-A-E.com. .com. Dot com. Yep. And uh, your Twitter? Is also, that? my Twitter is at dmcr one and that's also my Instagram. Instagram. So uh, DMCR1. Okay. Yep. Cool, man. We got some great things going on, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, try I'm trying to be like you when I grow up. Oh, no, please. I'm trying to be like you, stop, man. Yeah. <laughs> stop, yeah. Stop, I'm trying to be, stop. I'm trying to be the host. I'm trying to be the co-host. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. But you got to let me know when yeah, the next man. one is. Uh, yeah. And we'll definitely get up some other time, man. Definitely, man. Thanks definitely. for coming on, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. It's yeah. cool. It's cool you got going on here. Yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah, man. That's it for this episode of The Creation Ground. I'm your host, Aaron Lloyd. Be sure to check out our Instagram for future and previous guest info and check out our YouTube channel in the show notes below. Email us with any suggestions at thecreationgrounds at gmail.com. And if you got something out of this, I'd really appreciate if you spread the word and the love. Until next time, this is Aaron Lloyd telling you that the sky is the limit. Stay creative.